Good day, grade 9 students, and welcome to your science class. Last time, we learned about the projectile motion. And aiming the maximum height and range depends on the two factors, the initial velocity and the angle released by a projectile. This gives us a horizontally launched projectile and angle launch projectile. In horizontal motion or X component, it neglects air resistance. There is a constant horizontal velocity, we write it as V sub X, and horizontal acceleration is zero or AX is equals to zero. We call the horizontal distance as range. For vertical motion or Y component, the force acting upon in this motion is the force of gravity or the acceleration due to gravity. G is equals to negative 9.8 meter per second squared. The vertical velocity is increasing or we write it as V sub Y. We call the vertical distance as the height or H is equals to D sub Y. The projectile rises point A to point B. The vertical velocity or VY is decreasing. This because the direction of gravity is opposite to the projectile motion. As the projectile reaches the maximum height point B, it momentarily stops causing vertical velocity equals to zero or simply VY is equals to zero. When it returns back to the ground with point B to point C, it agrees to the direction of gravitational force, hence, the vertical velocity is increasing. Facts about projectile launch at an angle An object is projected from rest at an upward angle. Second, its initial velocity can be resolved into components, the X component and the Y component. The horizontal velocity is constant due to gravity. That's why we write it as A sub X is equals to zero. Fourth, the amount of time the object takes to come to a stop its highest point is the same amount of time it takes to return where it was. And lastly, the initial velocity upward will be the same magnitude or the opposite in direction as the final velocity when it returns to its original height. For a horizontally projected object, the displacement and velocity vector both have magnitude and direction. In horizontal component, we compute for the displacement or d sub x is equals to initial velocity or v sub x multiplied by time. We write it with an x because it refers to the x component. In equation number 2, in getting the initial velocity or vi sub x is equals to displacement divided by time or d sub x divided by time. Vertical components, we compute for the displacement as d sub y is equals to age or height, wherein it is equal to one half acceleration due to gravity multiplied by time squared. While in equation number four, we write or we compute for the initial velocity as v sub y is equals to acceleration due to gravity multiplied by time. And as for time, we compute it as t is equals to the square root of 2 multiplied by d sub y divided by g or acceleration due to gravity. In x component, we compute it as time is equals to d sub x divided by vi sub x or initial velocity in the x component. Now, what are the effects of an angle on the horizontal and vertical motion of a projectile? Mathematically, horizontal distance, or known as range, can be calculated using the equation. We write it as r is equals to initial velocity squared 
multiply it by sine to theta. The theta represents for the angle divided by g, where vi or v sub i is the initial velocity. In horizontal velocity component, we write it as v sub x is equals to v cosine theta. In vertical distance or the maximum height, it can be calculated using h or height is equals to initial velocity sine theta squared divided by 2 times g or 2 times 9.8 meter per second squared where vi is the initial velocity and in vertical velocity component v sub y is equals to cosine theta now let us apply the formula Solve the height and range of a projectile using the given equation launch at a constant initial velocity of 40 meter per second. First, let us write the given. The initial velocity is 40 meter per second at an angle or with a theta of 15 degrees. Now, let us compute for the maximum height of this projectile. So, in getting the maximum height, let us use the formula H is equals to initial velocity sine theta squared divided by 2 multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. By substituting the given to our formula, we are going to have this kind of solution. Where in height is equals to the initial velocity sine theta squared divided by 2g. So let us substitute. Initial velocity is 40 meter per second. Sine, the value of our theta is 15 degrees squared divided by 2 times the value of our g is 9.8 meter per second squared. Using PEMDAS, we are, we are going to compute for what is inside the parenthesis first. So, if we're going to compute for our calculator sine 15, we're going to have 0 0.2588 multiplied by 40 meter per second. And afterwards, we're going to square it. Divided by 2 times 9.8, that would give us 19.6 meter squared per second squared. 40 times 0. 2588 that would give us 10.35 meter per second then we're going to squared it divided by 19.6 meter squared over second squared 10.35 squared or simply 10.35 times 10.35 that would give us a 107.17 meter squared per second squared over 19.6 meter squared per second squared since we are talking about here about the maximum height we are going to cancel out the seconds this will leave us an answer of 5.46 meters the height of a projectile is equal to 5.5 meter at 15 angle of release while for the range we still have the same given and we're going to use the formula R is equals to VI squared sine 2 theta divided by G. To solve this, let us apply the given. So we have 40 meter per second squared sine 2 theta which is 15 degrees divided by 9.8 meter per second squared. 40 squared is equal to 1,600 meter squared over second squared. 2 times 15 is 30 degrees. So we have sine 30. If we're going to compute that in our calculator, sine 30 is equal to 0 0.5. 1,600 meter squared per second squared times 0 0.5 divided by 9.8. That would give us 800 meter per second squared over second squared divided by 9 meter per second squared. Let us cancel out like terms. That will give us a final answer of 81.63 meters.
The range of a projectile is equal to 82 meters at 15 degrees angle of release. If we're going to compute for the maximum height and range of different angles, in, at 15 degrees, we're going to have a maximum height of 5.5 meters and a range of 82 meters. For 30 degrees, that is 20.4 for the maximum height and 104 to 1 for the range. 33.7 for 40 degrees and 161 as the range for 40 degrees. As of 45 degrees, the maximum height would be 40.8 and the range would be 163. For angle number 50, we will have a maximum height of 47.9 and the range of 161. For an angle of 60, we're going to have a height of 61.2 and a range of 141. At 70 degrees, we will have a maximum height of 72 with a range of 105 meters. Now, based on the calculated vertical distance of a projectile, what happens to the height of the object as the angle of release increases? from 15 degrees to 70 degrees. The answer is, the height of the projectile also increases as the angle of release increases. What happens to the horizontal distance as the angle of release changes? The horizontal distance of the projectile varies as the angle of release increases. And last question, which angle of release show the same range of projectile. So we have the angles 30 degrees and 60 degrees. And that is all about our lesson for today. Stay tuned for our next topic. Goodbye for now.